Vincent van Gogh was a artist, an artistic genius. He saw and felt so passionately and created images of the divine in human experience. I'm thinking here of Starry Night created images of the evil that man, men succumb to. I'm thinking here of Night Cafe. Created images of the beautiful individual flower in a flower bed. I'm thinking here of his painting of the irises. Created images of the vitality of life. I'm thinking here of his sunflowers. These images are so beautifully and passionately wrought with never a false move that a viewer seeing the actual works, not the reproductions, but the actual works is literally physically moved to have a compassionate response. Van Gogh touched certain cultural chords that still resonate. Widely recognized as one of the greatest and most influential artists of his time, Vincent van Gogh created countless masterpieces that are still held in a high regard today, with art pieces such as Starry Night, Irises, Sunflowers, Wheat Filled with Crows, and countless self-portraits, Vincent van Gogh's unique art style would go on to inspire many future artists. However, these art pieces did not gain recognition until some time after his death, and despite many triumphs, van Gogh lived a life full of tragedy brought on by his mental illness. Depression and alcohol eventually led Vincent van Gogh to commit suicide, cutting his time as an artist short. Vincent van Gogh lived a, li a short life full of countless triumphs, but even more tragedies. Van Gogh, born March 30, 1853 in Zundert, Netherlands, was the second in a long line of Van Goghs, born between 1852 to 1867. Growing up, Vincent never had many friends, but his connection and dedication between him and his family certainly lasted. Starting in 1861, he was sent to the local boarding school in his hometown of Zunder, where a single teacher taught about 200 students. Vincent's parents soon realized that the school and its students was too rough on him and pulled him out of the school in a hope to find a better education. In 1864, they had finally found a school for Vincent and his five siblings about 20 miles from their home in Zunder. Vincent did well and soon advanced to secondary school. By the time 1866 rolled around, Vincent was transferred to the newly built state secondary school King Wilhelm II in Tilburg. This school was run by the government and had well-paid teachers that were relatively qualified for what they were teaching. He was soon promoted to first in his class and advanced quickly in his studies. One of his teachers, Cornelius C. Huismans, a renowned Dutch art educator, had, sent, had his students spend up to four hours a week freehand drawing. This is just one of the key factors that introduced Vincent to the art world. In 1868, however, just months away from the academic year, Vincent abruptly left school and returned to his hometown of Zunder. It is not known why Vincent left school as he did, but this would signal the end of his typical education. By the late 1870s to early 1880s, Van Gogh began to pursue art more seriously as he had failed multiple attempts to become a minister or preacher. Often, Vincent used his neighbors in his hometown as some of his first subjects as he dabbled in still life, soon painting portraits and more advanced pieces. Some of his most iconic work came in the mid to late 1880s to 1890, when mental illness began to degrade his psyche. It is now believed that Vincent most likely had some form of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and epilepsy. Often, he had manic moments of elation followed by large pits of depression. He spent about the first 30 years of his life failing at everything. He was pretty old when he got started. The earliest painting that we have by Vincent in our collection comes from his first serious campaign of work. It's the one over in the corner there, the head of a peasant woman. He was getting on for 30 when he painted that picture. And that's quite old to have your artistic career starting and six or seven years later, he's gone. So his career is incredibly short, and I think it's as well to remind ourselves how short his working life was, especially when you compare him to other iconic artists in this collection, like Turner or Michelangelo or Rembrandt or Titian particularly. Vincent is like a meteor, whoosh, and he's gone. 
In a letter to his brother Theo, Vincent wrote, I say loneliness and not solitude, but that loneliness which a painter has to bear, whom everybody in such isolated areas regards as a lunatic, a murderer, a tramp, etc., etc. Indeed, this may be a small misery, but it is a sorrow after all, a feeling of being an outcast, particularly strange and unpleasant. The country may be ever so stimulating and beautiful. This was just one of the many times Vincent felt despair. His illnesses were that of a double-edged sword. While they caused him to have psychotic breakdowns that often left him in the hospital, they allowed him to create masterpieces such as the famed Starry Night or his many self-portraits. His distinctive short paint strokes used in many of his pieces helped signify his iconic style. While these things are recognized now, many critics of his time often found his work to be lacking in detail and believed that he painted with a displeasing style. Van Gogh lived most of his life without many friends, but one of the best ones he had was his brother Theo. He and Theo would send over 900 letters to each other over the course of their career, often followed up with meetings in person. Theo was one of the few people that believed in Vincent for the majority of his life, but they did not have a perfect relationship. Theo, unfortunately, was an enabler of many of Vincent's addictions, regularly sending him money for either alcohol, cigarettes, or coffee. These addictions were something that Vincent would struggle with for the most of his relatively short life. Many of his addictions would go on to inspire some of his most renowned works while taking a detrimental toll on his mental health. Unfortunately, in his time, little was known about mental illness or treatment for addictions. Occasionally, he would attempt to receive help through admission to mental asylums, but these facilities were quite barbaric and primitive compared to the modern world. Vincent would never truly receive the help he so desperately needed and would go on to commit suicide at only 37 years old. Van Gogh also lived out the stereotype of the crazed modern artist. So he satisfied some stereotypical expectations that our culture has imposed on artists. Most of the leading artists in the history of Western culture were not crazy. They didn't commit suicide. They weren't failures with their families or romantically. They were normal, hardworking, married people. But our culture has fallen in love with the stereotype of the crazy artist, and the archetypal figure is Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van Gogh lived a life full of tragedy brought on by his various mental illnesses. Despite this, van Gogh started to become more optimistic around June of 1890 and started to see a brighter future for himself, as shown in a letter to his brother where he writes, I still love art and life very much. Yes, he had lots of challenges, no doubt about that. But he was also productive then. He was painting practically a painting a day. And you can tell from his letters how happy he was. His feeling of seeing something that's beautiful. However, not long after this, he relapsed and all of his problems and anxiety returned. On July 27th, Vincent van Gogh attempted suicide by shooting himself in the abdomen. Two days later, on July 29th, 1890, Vincent van Gogh died from his injuries. In the following years after his death, Vincent's brother Theo would continue to sell his art pieces, and eventually his brother's art would be s become some of the most famous paintings ever created. Hailed as the pioneer of modern art, Vincent van Gogh's pieces posthumously influenced countless artists and art styles. Vincent van Gogh's story is an important part of history for countless reasons. His unique art style and countless masterpieces still hold up today and serve as sources of inspiration for many modern artists. What's much more important, however, is the story of the broken man behind the paintbrush. Vincent van Gogh's mental illness and addictions affected him in countless ways, and many people today are going through the same things that he did. Vincent van Gogh's tragic story is important as it raised awareness of depression and anxiety and how it can torment anyone, even one of the greatest painters to ever live.